गदा धार श्रीवास हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे we continue reading from shrimad bhagavatam canto 3 chapter 29 text 14 se eva bhakti yoga kya atyantika udharitah yena tibrajya trigunam mad bhava yog padyate translation and purport by his divine grace is bhakti vedanta samishla prabhupad by attaining the highest platform of devotional service as i've explained one can overcome the influence of the three modes of material nature and be situated in the transcendental stage as is the lord so the lord he is on the transcendental platform god never gets influenced by the modes of goodness passion and ignorance he is always above the modes because he is the master of the uh, material energy he says devi hi esha guna mai mam maya duratyaya he says that in bhagavad gita chapter 7 text 14 that this divine energy of mine consisting of the three modes of material nature she belongs to me so the modes can never cover krishna but they cover us now if we want to get out of the modes then the only way the surest way the fastest way the easiest way is by engaging in pure devotional service once one is engaged in pure devotional service he is above the modes above the modes of nature krishna says that bhakti begins from the liberated platform brahma bhuta prasanatma so pure devotional service is the liberated platform shripad sankracharya who is supposed to be the leader of the impersonalist school of philosophers has admitted in the beginning of his comments on bhagavad gita that narayan the supreme personality of godhead is beyond the material conception I, i'm sorry beyond the material creation except for him everything is within the material creation so the impersonalist theory the impersonalist theory is coming from shripad shankracharya he was the one who propounded the impersonalist theory he is the leader but what even he is saying that lord narayan he is not a uh, on our platform he's never never influenced by maya is always above maya that he is god the supreme personality of godhead so already the leader of the impersonalist he's already explaining that there is a difference between the soul and god but the 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 sad part is that his followers don't accept it they don't accept this difference between god and the living entity and say that the living entity is god but no we can never become god only god is god god is never under maya we get influenced by maya because our size is very small so it is also confirmed in the vedic literature that before the creation there was only narayan neither lord brahma nor lord shiva existed only narayan or the supreme personality of godhead vishnu or krishna is always in the transcendental position beyond the influence of material creation we have been hearing in shrimad bhagavatam how the creation happens that ma vishnu is lying down on the causal ocean that time there is no creation at all and the entire creation is coming from the body of uh, the lord from the body of lord mahavishnu so it it's only krishna who exists even before the material creation so how can he come under the material modes you know she's his energy she listens to him so he's beyond he's beyond the influence of of maya the illusion of maya he's always on the liberated platform always on the transcendental platform it's we the living entities we because our size is so tiny and we are called the marginal energy tatashta shakti why marginal tatashta tatashta means we are on the shore you know like the border how there is the ocean shore sometimes it's inside the water sometimes it's outside the water similarly because we are very tiny we get influenced sometimes by the material energy 
So that is our position. But God, his position is always that he's the greatest and he can never get influenced by Maya. The material qualities of goodness, passion, and ignorance cannot affect the position of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And therefore, he is called Nirguna, free from all tinges of material qualities. So when the Lord is called Nirguna, some people think, oh, because he's Nirguna, he has no qualities. Nirguna means he has no material qualities, but he has spiritual qualities. He has spiritual qualities. Here, the same fact is confirmed by Lord Kapila. One who is situated in pure devotional service is transcendently situated, as is the Lord. So if we want to come on the same platform, because God is always on the transcendental platform, if we want to become as good as God, we have to engage in pure devotional service. We will never become God. But in the liberated platform, we can understand that I have an eternal loving relationship with God and let me engage in that relationship. Just as the Lord is unaffected by the influence of the material modes, so too are his pure devotees. One who is not affected by the three modes of material nature is called a liberated soul or Brahma Bhuta soul. Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma is the stage of liberation. So Krishna, God, he's always liberated. He's never under the modes. And the pure devotee is also liberated. He, is, he also rises above the modes. Because, the, because that is the, 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 the pure devotional service is helping him to free him from the modes now. Now he has understood that, oh, I am an eternal part and parcel of Krishna. So he's understood his position. So he does not need to be, you know, in the material consciousness anymore. He does not need to be covered by all this maya anymore. So this is applicable only to the person who constantly engages in devotional service of Krishna. And this and is thus in the transcendental stage. He is above the influence of the three modes of material nature. Aham Brahmasmi, I am not this body. So how can we come? Because we theoretically, okay, we say I'm not the body, I'm the soul. In theory, we understand it. But what about practical? Practically, we are, all our energy is going, thinking that we are the body. We are acting as if we are the body. Everything we are doing as if we are the body. Only in theory, okay, we understand we are not the body. But how to be really situated on this platform of Aham Brahmasmi. I am not this body, I am the soul. By constantly engaging in devotional service to Krishna. Once we constantly engage in devotional service to Krishna, we are automatically on this Brahma Bhuta platform. Because the reason the body is given to us is because we said, I don't want to have a relationship with Krishna. That's the reason we have this body. Now, if we engage in service to Krishna, means we are being situated in our original position. Then we don't need a material body anymore. Our, that Icha and Dvesh, our desire to be God and our envy of God is, is being corrected. You know, it's being corrected. And then, and this is the reason we are here in the material world, to correct these two desires. And then once it's corrected, we don't need to be here anymore. We go to the spiritual world. Just as the prisoner, once he's reformed, you know, he's reformed, then he's let loose into the society. So that he is, he's safe to live in the outside world because his, he's been reformed now. So th that is the reason we are here in this material world because of our desire to be God, our envy of God. And the more we engage in devotional service, it helps us to correct off this mentality because devotional service is the original platform of every living entity, is the original position of every living entity. And then, when we are doing it perfectly, no need, no any more material body, and we go back home, back to Godhead. 
It is the misconception of the impersonalist that one can worship any imaginary form of the Lord or Brahman and at the end merge in the Brahman effulgence. Of course, to merge into the bodily effulgence Brahman of the Supreme Lord is also liberation, as explained in the previous verse, Ekatva. Ekatva is also liberation, but that sort of liberation is never accepted by any devotee. So a devotee it never wants ekatva. Why? Why a devotee does not want ekatva being situated in the Brahman platform? Because he's not engaged in serving the Lord. That's right. Thank you. That's right. So, and, and he, so he, does not want to be in this in this Brahman. And as soon as he is engaging in devotional service, the qualitative oneness, Satchidananda platform, is already automatically achieved. So he's already liberated. A pure devotee is already liberated. He is already Satchidananda. For a devotee, that qualitative equality, which is the result of impersonal liberation is already attained. He does not have to try for it separately. It is clearly stated here that simply by pure devotional service, one becomes qualitatively as good as the Lord himself. So pure devotional service, that is the platform of liberation. In that platform, one is, becomes as good as the Lord only in quality. We can never quantitatively become same like God. We can never become as powerful as God. Only God is unlimitedly powerful. But on the liberated platform, what happens is we, are, we don't have this material body anymore, no material consciousness. We are the pure spirit soul, Satchit Ananda, and that is revealed. We are not covered by any material consciousness. And we have a spiritual form. Each, of, each living entity has a spiritual form. So we can be situated in that spiritual form and have a loving relationship with the Lord in any of the five rasas which we said. Is that okay? Yes. Did you want to add anything or comment on anything? No, then we will continue. So it's only by pure devotional service. Yesterday we were hearing also in Bhagavad Gita chapter 7, text 14, Krishna says, you want to get out of this material world, you can't get out of here by your own endeavor, by your own strength. Nobody can take you out, only me or my representative, the one who I authorize. If I have given somebody um, authority, only me or that person who I have given authority to can bring you out of this material world, back home, back to Godhead. So reading on. Nishevite nani mitena swadharmena mahiyasa kriya yogena shastena nati himshrena nityashaha. A devotee must execute his prescribed duties, which are glorious without material profit, without excessive violence, he should regularly perform one's devotional activities. One has to execute his prescribed duties according to his social position as a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, or Shuddha. The prescribed duties of the four classes of men in human society are also described in Bhagavad Gita. So the Varna Sharma system is made by Krishna. Varna Sharma system is made by Krishna. It's not spiritual, but it is a stepping stone to spiritual life. It is material. We do not have this Varna Sharma system in the spiritual world. We have it here in the material world. Why? Because we are uh, in the modes of nature. So based on the modes, you know, we are working based on the modes that we are in. Uh, so, the activities of brahmanas are to control the senses and to become simple, 
clean, learned devotees. The Kshatriyas have the spirit for ruling. They are not afraid on the battlefield and they are charitable. The Vaishyas or the mercantile class of men trade in commodities, protect cows and develop agricultural produce. The Shudras or laborer class serve the higher classes because they themselves are not very intelligent. So the society was broadly divided in this way in the Vedic times so that man could be peaceful, work according, we each have to work. The soul is always active, it's not dead. So we each have to work. So Krishna divided it in such a way that we can work according to the modes of nature that we are in and at the same time cultivate spiritual knowledge so that we can live peacefully in this life and at the end of this life we can go back home, back to Godhead. This is the reason that Krishna uh, created this Varna Sharma system. So from every position as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita, Karmana tam abhyarchya. One can serve the Supreme Lord by performing one's prescribed duty. It is not that only the Brahmanas can serve the Supreme Lord and not the Shudras. Anyone can serve the Supreme Lord by performing his prescribed duties under the direction of a spiritual master or representative of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this Varna Sharma system is, cre is created by Krishna. And if we engage in our duty, our whatever is our prescribed duty, under the guidance of a spiritual master, this is for the pleasure of Krishna. This is how we are serving Krishna. Because it's made by him. This, this, the entire social structure is made by him. And we are working in that social structure, not to get attached to the result, but my dear Krishna, somehow or the other, due to my past karma, due to my modes of nature, I am in this position. Let me do the, my duty to the best of my ability under the guidance of the spiritual master for your pleasure. For your pleasure. This is karma yoga. This is karma yoga then it is not ordinary karma. Whenever we are connecting our activities to Krishna, it becomes yoga. Yoga means linking, linking to Krishna. So anyone can, so it's not that only the Shudras can perform their prescribed duties for the pleasure of uh, Krishna, or only the Brahmanas can perform, or only Kshatriyas, and that Shudras cannot. Each and every person, no matter what. These divisions are just made depending on what modes we are in. It's just that. You know, it in no way it um, affects our relationship with Krishna. In no way. So no one should think that his prescribed duties are inferior. No one should think whatever is one's prescribed duties, we do it. Uh, and this is my position. A Brahmana can serve the Lord by using his intelligence and the Kshatriyas can serve the Supreme Lord by using his military arts just as Arjuna served Krishna. Arjuna was a warrior. He had no time to study Vedanta or highly intellectual books. So anyone can serve the Lord by engaging in their, in their um, by, being, by doing their own duty like the Brahmanas. They are intelligent. They are always reading the Shastra. So they can serve Krishna by hearing from Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, studying the scriptures. So Arjuna, he, does, he did not have time to do that. He was a Kshatriya. So he served Krishna by fighting. He fought for Krishna. That's how he served Krishna. The damsels, damsels in Rajdam were girls born of the Vaishya class and they engaged in protecting cows and producing agriculture. Krishna's foster father, Nanda Maharaj, and his associates were all Vaishyas. They were not at all educated, but they could serve Krishna by loving him and by offering everything to him. So the, the gopis, the gopis were not studying scripture. They were simply taking care of the cows 
you know they were they would also help in the in the fields the the gopas the gopas they were all doing agriculture they were doing trading of the cow products milk products trading of the grains so and this is how they were pleasing krishna their the, the whole mood is i love krishna whatever duties i'm doing i'm doing but the the consciousness is i love krishna i'm doing this for his pleasure this is how i'm serving krishna similarly there are many instances in which chandalas or those lower than shudras have served krishna so it's not that only the uh, the the people in the vedic society who are who are in the society are serving krishna the chandalas were not in the in the vedic society because they are lower than the shudras even they can serve krishna so our material position has no effect in our relationship with krishna materially whatever is our position it does not matter because we are not the body we are the soul and it's the soul that we have a relationship with krishna also the sage vidur was considered a shudra because his mother happened to be a shudra there are no distinctions for it is declared by the lord in bhagavad gita that anyone engaged specifically in devotional service is elevated to the transcendental position without a doubt so anyone can do devotional service it doesn't mean that if i'm born in the family of a chandala i cannot engage in devotional service no anyone can anyone everyone's prescribed duty is glorious if it is performed in the devotional service of the lord without desire for profit such loving service must be performed without reason without impediment and spontaneously krishna is lovable and one has to serve him in whatever capacity one can that is pure devotional service so shila prabhupada is he is showing us how we can practically practically how we can engage in pure devotional service he is saying everyone's prescribed duty is glorious if it is performed in the devotional service of the lord you see bhagavatam says that okay you are engaged to do your duty but if your duty does not bring you to the point of devotional service what is the use then you did your duty very well okay very good congratulations but what next you are still going to come back to the material world what did you gain you know by doing your duty but not engaging in devotional service so the duty has to be done for the pleasure of krishna that is the way to do the duty then it is glorious the duty is glorious if it is performed in devotional service of the lord and then without desire for profit you know we get attached to the result of doing our duty i will do my duty i'll get i'll get so famous i'll get so much adoration i'll get so much worship or maybe different different people different uh, uh, people have different desires but we need to give that up and do it simply for uh, because it's my duty to do it's my service to krishna performed without reason without impediment and spontaneously spontaneously automatically automatically so this is pure devotional service krishna is lovable and one has to serve him in whatever capacity one can so we may say oh but i'm not yet on the platform but that's all right we practice that's the reason we practice we practice and then one day we will get perfect just as the the athlete he practices before he runs in the olympics he practices it takes years of practice for him to run in that one race so we practice devotional service so that we can be engaged in pure devotional service so do you all want to stop here because the time is up we still have three yeah. verses yeah because it's quite long no yeah that's why we'll stop here yeah. but did you have any anything to add or question so even i think if you do a charity for the pleasure of krishna then it's 
okay also, right? It's good. Yes, for the pleasure of Krishna, yes. Krishna says that in Bhagavad Gita, he says, whatever you do, whatever you give away, you do it for me. Yeah. So he's saying you're giving charity, you give charity to the Krishna consciousness movement. He says that in Bhagavad Gita, because charity and different types in the modes of nature. You know? So, and the best charity, of course, if we can give people Krishna consciousness, that's the best charity we can do. Best charity, give people Krishna consciousness, give them the Hare Krishna mantra. Give How them do you Krishna. give huh? I'm sorry. How do you give Krishna consciousness to other people? Speak to others about Krishna, give them books, give them Srila Prabhupada's books, give them prasadam, give them the chanting of the holy name, encourage them to chant, invite them to programs. You know, this is how. This is how. Just somehow the other. Giving books is a very good way of bringing people to Krishna consciousness. Harinam, Sankirtan, just, just sitting together and doing Kirtan, all that is giving Krishna consciousness to others. Is that all right? Yes. yes. So we'll stop here for today. Thank okay. you so much for listening. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. One question. Hare. Yes, please. Uh, like here, people, they eat pork, beef, and so many bad things. Like in Krishna consciousness, it is not allowed to even think about that. The cooking is a different thing. So if we offer prasada or bhoga to them, so is it okay or? Yes, it's good. Very good. Not bhoga. Bhoga is for Krishna. We offer them prasada, so, which yes, is very prashad, good for Mahaprasad, yes. Is okay. Yes, very good. It's good, very good. Everyone should get prashad. Everyone should get the holy name, get the the books. It doesn't mean that because I'm a meat eater, I I should I in fact I need it the most then. I really need help then. You know, so I should be given more prasad, more holy name, more books, more association. Like, that. like slowly they, they can be changed, right? If, a, yes. if they eat uh, prasad, they can be changed. Yes, of course. Prasad, but also if, they, if you are able to tell them that this is prasad. You know, the, the fastest way is, of course, giving the holy name to others. Because that's the most powerful. So what happens? Because it's the most potent. So when we are giving prasad, let them somehow or the other hear the holy name or chant the holy name. Because no doubt, yes, prasad helps, very helps, but it will take a long time, especially if they don't know this is prasad. Yes, know, yes. Especially if they don't know. So it will take a very long time. But if they know it's prasad, or, you, or even if they don't know, if you're able to tell them Hare Krishna, let them hear the holy name or if they are able to speak the holy name, that gives much faster. Mm -hmm. it, it can raise the consciousness much faster. Mm -hmm. No, because I ask you, because sometimes the, some Taiwanese, they came to my home and uh, I cook actually to offer God. So sometimes they suddenly come and I provide them the same thing because I don't have any other thing to give them. And they like to eat Indian food. So I hesitate, like, is it okay or not to, to give them to eat? It's very good. Something. It's, it's very good. Nobody should be stopped from uh, getting Krishna consciousness. Everyone has, uh, has the right to prasad, to hearing the holy name, to chanting the holy name, everyone. So yes, please give. And I think maybe by <laughs> eating the prasad, maybe there might be some transformation. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. There, there yeah. will be, yes. definitely. Yeah. Definitely there will be. Definitely. Yeah. It will help. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah. Oh, yes, please continue to giving fun. prasad to everyone. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I say prasad should be given to everyone, irrespective yes. of whether you are eat, eat eat or not a meat eater. Just yes. everyone gets it. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for all your participation. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shlapropad ki jai, Gaur Bhaktavindi ki jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.